Hi everyone, Suzanne here. I hope you're all well and welcome to Sew Custom. Today's video is how I sewed up this little number. So if you're interested in seeing that, then let's get started. Starting with the fabric, this I think is a polyester. It's got gorgeous little polka dots on it and daisies with a nice little yellow centre. It was horrendous to work with. More of that later and on to the cutting out. This is my front. I have two layers of fabric underneath my pattern piece. A couple of notches that will help me out later on. And I'm cutting this piece out twice. So the first thing to do here is to add a little bit of strength just along that centre front. So I'm adding some super lightweight interfacing here. I'm going to add buttons and button loops and this will just support them. And of course I've repeated that on both sides and on to those button loops. And I've decided to try out the tape method of adding loops here. So I'm using some quilting tape which I've stuck down to my cutting mat. I've then lined up my pattern piece with that tape and I'm just marking where my loop should be. And then for my loops I'm using some elastic cord and I'm just lining it up with my marks. Folding it over at the top and then sticking down the other side, creating this nice little loop. And then at the underside, I'm creating another larger loop and what this is doing is allowing me to get my cord nice and straight right across my marker. So I'll repeat that for all of my loops. Trim off the excess. So now that they're all done, I'm ready to stick this down to my fabric. And I'm just going to stitch right over the top at my one centimeter seam allowance using a tiny little stitch length here. So that's that done. So I just need to remove the tape and of course on camera this looks as if it took a second but this actually took quite some time to get all of that tape off but now that it is off I'm ready to add my facing. So laying it over the top my fabric is right sides together and pinning and stitching here right across that stitch line that you just seen me stitch using a regular stitch length this time stitching to start and back stitching to finish. So that just needs a press in preparation for under stitching. So I'm pressing the facing away from the bodice but making sure that that seam alliance in underneath is butted up against it. And stitching here through the facing, through the seam allowance in underneath and I'm about a millimetre or two away from the bodice using a little bit of a longer stitch length and this is just going to help that facing to lie nice and neatly tucked away in underneath. So the next thing to do is just to join these two pieces together around that outer edge. So using a little bit of a longer stitch length here sewing within my seam alliance and this is just going to help prevent these two pieces from moving about when I'm trying to put this dress together. So that's the first part of my bodice complete. Now I need to add my side front. I have two layers of fabric underneath my pattern piece. 
the usual sleeve notch and a couple of corresponding notches down that princess seam. So just laying it over the top, my fabric is right sides together, lining up my notches and ready to stitch. Back stitching to start at my 1cm seam allowance, taking it nice and easy around those curves, trying to make sure that my fabric is nicely aligned the whole way down and back stitching to finish. So I'll finish that edge off camera, press out that seam and this is the result. Happy with that? So that's the first side of my bodice complete, now for the other. So I have a little modesty strip I want to add here, so I've just cut myself a rectangle of fabric, folding it in half along its length and pinning up one of the short ends and stitching right across the top. Turn that right side out and give it a press and now this piece is ready to be joined to my bodice front. So just laying it over the top, lining up my raw edges about a centimetre or so down from the neck and pinning into place. Stitching at my one centimetre seam alliance, back stitching to start and back stitching to finish. So now that that's done, I'm ready to add my facing. So just like before, laying it right sides together and sewing here right over the top of the stitch line you just seen me sew. Back stitching to start and back stitching to finish. my facing all attached and ready for understitching. So off camera I've pressed my facing away from the bodice, made sure that seam alliance is butted up against it and here just stitching about a millimetre or two away from the bodice through the facing and through that seam alliance in underneath. Using a little bit of a longer stitch length, back stitching to start and back stitching to finish. So that's had a good press. I just need to join my facing to my bodice around that outer edge and add my side front. All of which I've done off camera in exactly the same way as I did before. And now that that's done, I'm ready to add my buttons. So in preparation for that, I'm just going to pin these two pieces together just so I can get the placement right. I'm adding these standard little shank buttons and I'll sew those on off camera. And this is the result. Super happy with these. So now that that's done, I'm ready to join this piece to my back at the shoulders. My fabric underneath is on the fold. I have the usual sleeve notches and a notch to mark the centre, top and bottom. So laying that right sides together, pinning into place and stitching here at my 1cm seam alliance. Back stitching to start and back stitching to finish. So I'll take care of that raw edge and press out that seam off camera and this is the result. And now that that's done I'm ready to finish the neckline. So the first thing to do here is to create a nice ruffle piece that I'll sandwich in between my collar. My fabric is on the fold. I have a notch at the fold line top and bottom. And before I can gather this down, I just need to close off each of those short ends 
stitching here at my one centimeter seam allowance. And once that's been turned right side out and pressed, this is how it looks. And now that that's done, I'm ready to gather. So I'm running a line of stitches quite close to the edge, using the longest stitch length on my machine, back stitching to start, and pulling my threads to finish. So that's my first line done. And for the second, I've just moved my needle a little bit towards the left and stitching the whole way along. So that's my gathering stitches all in place. So I'm leaving those bottom two threads as they are, holding on to the top two and pushing my fabric along. And this is where I discovered that this fabric was terrible. So you can see here that the fabric has practically disintegrated along that edge. And as I didn't have any more of it, I had to just trim off all of those threads and make do with what I had. And you'll see further on when I come to work on the skirt, I use a different method for creating my ruffles. But for now, this piece is ready for the collar. My fabric underneath is on the fold. I have a shoulder notch and a notch at the top and bottom of the fold line. And I'm cutting this piece out twice. And I've run a little bit of that same lightweight interfacing on these. And I'm laying one piece over the top of my ruffles, right sides together, lining up my notches and stitching here at my one centimeter seam alliance. Back stitching to start. And back stitching to finish. So that's the first side of my collar in place. Now for the second. And I've done a little bit of prep work here off camera. So I've added a loop to one side, just in the same way as I did on the bodice earlier. And I've also pressed up by my seam alliance that bottom edge. And sewing here, starting at that short end, little pivot at my corner, at my one centimeter seam alliance, Pivot on the other side and finishing with a back stitch. So I'll turn that right side out and press, and this is how it looks. Happy with that. So now to add this to the bodice, lining up that center notch. Lining up my shoulder notch and my centre front and ready to stitch. Back stitching to start at my one centimetre seam alliance. And finishing with a back stitch. So I just need to press those seams up inside the collar and pin. And you can see I've already done one half here. So just folding those raw edges in underneath, laying that crease edge of the under collar over the stitch line you've just seen me sew, and pinning. And ready to stitch. So I'm stitching right along the edge of that crease, taking this nice and gently. These stitches will be visible from the outside, so I want to try and be as neat as possible, using a little bit of a longer stitch length, back stitching to start, and back stitching to finish. So that's my collar all in place. Got my ruffle sandwiched nicely in between. I've given it a good press 
and sewed my button on off camera. Super happy with this. So now to close up those side seams. So laying one over the other right sides together. And stitching here at my one centimeter seam alliance. Back stitching to start and to finish. So as usual, I'll tidy up that edge and give that seam a press. And now that that's done, I'm ready for my sleeve. So the first thing to do here is to deal with the cuffs. My fabric underneath is on the fold. And I'm cutting this piece out twice. And just like the bodice before, I want to add a little bit of structure and strength here. So using that same super lightweight interfacing. And now that that's done, I'm ready for button loops. So I've prepped these in the same way as I did on the bodice. And just stitching here at my 1cm seam alliance. Using that tiny little stitch length again. Back stitching to start and to finish. So I've removed that tape. Press that bottom edge in underneath by my 1cm seam alliance and here just pinning up those side seams. Ready to stitch at my 1cm seam alliance, back stitching to start and finish. So I'll turn that right side out and press. This is what I get. So that completes the prep work on the cuff for now. So on to the sleeve. I have two layers of fabric underneath my pattern piece, the usual sleeve notches around the head and a couple of notches along that bottom hem to indicate the area I want to gather down. And then the last thing here is just a little slit along that left hand side. So the first thing to do is to deal with that little slit. So I've cut myself a strip of bias, laying my sleeve over the top right sides together and I'm going to stitch here at my 1cm seam alliance, making sure I'm catching that little V as I go. This is just a nice, easy and quick way to add bias to a slit like this and it helps prevent any little wrinkles along that point. So now the next thing to do here is to trim down that excess seam alliance. So taking off here probably about two thirds. And now to press the bias away from the sleeve here just folding that raw edge in underneath, folding again making sure that the crease line is lined up with the stitch line you've just seen me sew and pinning into place. Stitching here right along that folded edge using a little bit of a longer stitch length again, taking this nice and easy Backstitching to start and backstitching to finish. And now to finish this bias, I just need to add a stitch line on the diagonal just along that top edge. So this is just going to help that bias to sit nice and neatly along the bottom of this sleeve. So now that that's done, I'm ready to gather up that bottom edge. So I'm trying to avoid having the same problem I had before with my little ruffle piece on the collar here. So instead of sewing two lines of gathering stitches, I'm going to use this gathering foot. I'm increasing my stitch length, increasing my tension, and what this foot is doing is gathering up the fabric as I sew across. 
so it means I don't have to pull on any threads or anything and hopefully ruling out the entire problem I had before. This foot was recommended to me over on Instagram a good while ago now. So if that was you, I thank you very much. So that's that done. So now just to see if I've gathered enough and if it fits into my cuff, which it does. Super happy with that. So before I can stitch it to my cuff, I just want to close up my underarm seam. Stitching here at my 1cm seam allowance. So I've cleaned up that edge and pressed out my seam. And here, just lining up my cuff with my little bias bound slit, pinning from one side to the other. Stitching at my one centimeter seam alliance, back stitching to start and back stitching to finish. So just like the collar before, I need to press those raw edges inside the cuff Fold that pre-prepared crease line over the top of this stitch line and pin into place. And ready to stitch. Again, just stitching right along that crease edge using a little bit of a longer stitch length taking this nice and gently, trying to be as neat as possible, backstitching to start and backstitching to finish. And now to finish the prep work on the sleeve, I've given that a good press and off camera I've sewed on my buttons. And now that that's done, I'm ready to add this to my bodice. So firstly, lining up that underarm seam. My front notches. Back notches. And shoulder seam. I'll pop a few more pins in off camera and ready to stitch. Starting at that underarm seam with a back stitch, sewing at my one centimeter seam alliance the whole way around. So I'll run that edge through the overlocker and press, and this is how they look. Happy with those. So now I'm ready to move on to my skirt. This is my front, my fabric underneath is on the fold. I have a notch on the fold line top and bottom. Exactly the same thing for the back. So the first thing to do here is to gather down the waist and I don't want too many gathers here so I've decreased my tension down to 7 and this is the amount of gathers I get. This unfortunately for me was still a bit too much so what I had to do rather than trying to loosen the threads I had to just go in and unpick stitches across this waistline. If I was using any other fabric, I would just loosen the threads and adjust the gathers. But as you've already seen, this fabric did not like that too much. So anyway, I'm all adjusted now and ready for my first tier. My fabric underneath is on the fold and I have a notch top and bottom of the fold line. And I'm going to cut this piece out twice for tier 1 front and back and I'm going to cut it out four times for tier 2 front and back. So the first thing to do here is to gather down that top edge 
and this time I want lots more gathers so I've increased my tension again up to nine but this time I'm putting my finger at the back of the foot catching the fabric as it comes through in the hopes of gaining a little bit more gathers in my fabric and this little trick worked really well super happy with that so measuring here just to make sure everything fits as it should and it does so pinning into place lining up my notches lining up my side seams stitching here at my one centimeter seam allowance back stitching to start and back stitching to finish So I finished my edge and pressed and now that that's done I'm ready for tier 2. So before I can gather down my top edge I just need to join these two pieces together. So laying one over the other right sides together and stitching here at my 1cm seam allowance the whole way along. So I finished my edge and pressed out my seam and now that that's done this piece is ready for gathering. So doing that same trick again, popping my finger behind the foot, my tension is at its maximum and just stitching the whole way along that top edge. So I've measured to make sure this lines up as it should with tier 1. I've lined up my side seams and notches and pinned into place and here just stitching exactly as I did before at my 1cm seam allowance the whole way across. I finished my edges and pressed and off camera I've repeated that whole process again for the back. So now that that's done, I'm ready to join these two pieces together at the side seams. Lining up my top and bottom edges and my tiers and stitching here at my one centimeter seam allowance the whole way down. camera I've pressed out that seam, ran it through the overlocker and while I was there I've just ran that hem through and to finish it I'm just going to fold in underneath and run a stitch line the whole way around. Starting at the side seam using a little bit of a longer stitch length and I'm sewing directly through those overlock stitches starting and finishing with a back stitch. So that just needs a good press which you can see I've went ahead and done here and now that that's done I'm ready to join my bodice to my skirt at the waist. So lining up that centre back notch my side seams and my centre front, making sure to lap my two bodice pieces one over the other and stitching here at my 1cm seam allowance the whole way around. So I'll finish my edge and press and this is what I get and with that this little dress is complete. So I have those princess seams on the front, I've got my button loops, buttons and modesty strip, I've got my stand collar with that gorgeous little ruffle piece sandwiched in between, my huge sleeves, my little slit in at the back, got my cuffs with loops and buttons again. And then that 
gorgeous tiered skirt. And this is what it looks like on. So despite the huge amount of problems I had with this fabric, I absolutely love this dress. I love the fit, it's so comfortable. I love all of the details. So those buttons and button loops of the center front and cuffs. And I will 100% be using that tape method again. I love that little stand collar with its ruffle, those huge sleeves, and of course, all of the gathers of the skirt. Again, another technique I will 100% be using in the future is that gathering foot that helped me out no end on this project. Super happy with that. Absolutely love this one. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed, please do. And I shall see you on Friday. Until then, I hope you have a fantastic week. Bye, folks.